new and more massive mobilization. This awaits the Russians in the coming months. Such a conclusion can be drawn from the propaganda document of the Kremlin conclusions of the war with NATO in Ukraine, which is distributed among the soldiers of the Russian Federation. They say that in order for Russia to achieve victory, the numerical strength of its army should be about 5 million servicemen. This can mean only one thing – the introduction of martial law in the country and a new wave of mobilization. Where to get so many weapons then for 5 million people? Where to get protective equipment, winter uniforms, armored vehicles, on which they will have to perform these tasks? The Russian Federation doesn't have such resources. They will not be able to put such a number of personnel under arms, equip and train it, because the throughout of training centers in Russia is about 80,000 people in two months, respectively sending Russian citizens with digging sticks to the combat work of Ukrainian M142 Heimers, not a good idea. But the Kremlin has proved more than once that the fate of Russian citizens is of no concern to the authorities. However, the Russians begin to understand this only when they get to the front line and are under the artillery fire of the Ukrainian armed forces. After all, the Putin regime promises the mobilized good training, decent salaries and reliable weapons. But in reality, Russians in Ukraine will only face their own death. I will say briefly, so that you understand, bro. We had 16 people in a platoon, do you get it? Machine gunners, 16 people. In short, there are five people left, basically everyone was killed. The Russian authorities say that we have destroyed two infantry fighting vehicles, five infantry fighting vehicles, two tanks, three tanks, 300 mercenaries of the armed forces of Ukraine. Oh, come on, you'd better tell everyone how much of our personnel was killed just in a day. Damn it, tell that. Yeah, we already have rumors that 80,000 servicemen have already been killed. Well, everything is possible. The losses of Russians in the war against Ukraine have already exceeded 86,000 people. And this is only approximately. And there are also thousands of prisoners of war, hundreds of thousands of wounded who will never again be in service. It is difficult to guess how many Russian families will be left without husbands, fathers, sons. After all, Putin continues to literally throw cannon fodder at strategic directions for him in the Donetsk region. На Бахмутскому. The enemy is concentrating his main efforts on conducting offensive operations on the Bakhmut and Avdiivka directions. The Russian army has been trying to storm the Ukrainian city of Bakhmut for months, each time receiving a repulse from the armed forces of Ukraine. The Kremlin is constantly pulling its equipment there and transferring additional groups of mobilized men who suffer huge losses. A similar situation is in Svatova, Luhansk region, British intelligence reports. Mobilized reservists have highly likely experienced particularly heavy casualties after being committed to dig ambitious trench systems while under artillery fire around the Luhansk region, city of Svatova. In Donetsk region, reservists have been killed in large numbers in frontal assaults into well-established Ukrainian defensive zones around the city of Bakhmut. From the message of the British Ministry of Defense. The Kremlin continues to hide its losses in the war against Ukraine as well as justify its defeats. In the same training manual on the conclusions which was distributed in the Russian army, the Kremlin calls NATO its enemy and not Ukraine. It is easy to explain. After all, losing to the alliance is not so embarrassing for Putin. It can be justified. The loss in the war against NATO can be justified easier. It is theoretically impossible to win in it from the point of view of the mass audience. But losing to Ukraine is dangerous on the information front. It is politically dangerous for Putin, whose regime is already very fragile, plus economic turmoil because of the pressure of Western sanctions. Russia is looking for a convenient pause that could be propagandized. And the frame in which the understanding of the Russian general audience would be put about what actually all that was. But no matter what picture the Kremlin tries to paint for the Russians, the result is the same. Russia attacked Ukraine and is fighting not with NATO soldiers, but with the armed forces of Ukraine. And it pays for its aggression and sadism with the lives of its own citizens. Reported by Dana Kolesnik, Ksenia Barvinenko, UATV News.